Seven things you always wanted to know about living on a remote ranch in Montana. So Yellowstone has portrayed this remote ranch lifestyle and a lot of people wonder what it's really like in real life. So I put together seven questions that I thought were decent from a, a recent trip that I made to a large ranch near Big Timber, Montana. So you're gonna meet Sophie and Taylor who manage this ranch and we're gonna ask them these questions. So the first question we're gonna address today is do ranch hands live in a bunkhouse like they do in Yellowstone? How you doing? Yeah, nice to meet Sophie? you in person. Yeah. yeah. Good to meet you. Me too. I hear you got the camera out all the time. It drives They're them getting insane. sick of you. It drives them insane. They so he it. sneaks around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She sneaks around. She sneaks around. Get, when I do a get angles on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, in, in Yellowstone they have a bunkhouse for all the the guys to live in. You guys don't live in a bunkhouse, right? No, nope. they don't live in a bunkhouse. No. Live in just another. We, everybody has their own house. Just kind of spread out on the place, or yeah, one yeah, here, one down there. Yeah, each two. Kind of each where... unit has a at least one house. Spread out quite a ways. Uh, yeah, I would say probably eight miles. I don't know of any place. I, I've been asked this a lot, but I don't know of any place that actually does have a bunkhouse where they still have ranch hands in it like yeah. they do on like yellowstone, yellowstone. Right. probably the closest thing is what camp like if they have camp right most everybody now has a family so it's hard to all your employees are have a family so how do you have, keep them in a bunkhouse it'd be pretty tough be pretty tough yeah, yeah. You, you don't think your wife would go for that i don't think my wife would go for that <laughs> uh, i don't think any of our wives would go for that <laughs> You live in a bunkhouse, you don't have a wife. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't yeah, have a wife. A little bit like Yellowstone. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> you have visitors. A little wilder. And no wives. <laughs> yeah. So the next question is, how do you deal with life being so remote? Now, when we're saying remote, some people might say when, when they hear how far it is to town, they're like, oh, man, that's nothing. When you live in a city, it's like a two-hour commute. But when you're, in a, you're sitting in a car in traffic and you're in a city the whole time, it's a little different than you have to go 15 miles down a really bumpy, not maintained gravel road to get to town, to get to a highway, then to get to town. And when they say town, uh, the town of Big Timber is the size, is the town of Big Timber doesn't even have a stoplight, not even a blinking stoplight and no stoplight. That's how big it is. So take that in consideration when you hear how they deal with being remote. She's yeah. a little timid, but her brother is a pretty good little cat dog. Yeah. I was asking your husband, but uh, you take the kids to school every day? Uh, yep. So, so you have to go So you have to go there and then go get them again at... Yeah, like, usually. Sometimes they ride the bus. Oh, the, the, us, the bus does come out here? Yeah, so the bus goes to Springdale. And so for us, that's like, I don't know, 30 minutes at the most. These guys... Springdale is 30 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, well, Big Timber is 30 minutes. Okay. These guys, they live way farther back on the ranch. And so, how far is it for you guys driving mm, into school? It's about 45 for our kids to go to Livingston. 45 yeah. minutes. Well, so you guys go to Livingston to and school. Bobby... My wife Bobby works Joe. in Livingston, so she takes them to school every day. And she said Bobby's been driving to town every day, five days a week, for how long now? Well, here, I've been here just over 19, going on 20. It'll be 20 in November. Well, Bobby's your wife? Cause I... uh, no, Bobby's my wife, and she's worked with uh, Opportunity Bank in Livingston for 25 years. Okay. I always say the, the thing that makes a rancher successful or a ranch hand successful is a wife that has a really good job with benefits. <laughs> So a lot of ranch kids, and even me personally, look at veterinarians as like the epitome of making money and being in the ranching lifestyle. So what do I think now about being a veterinarian? I would never want to be a veterinarian. No. I, didn't I mean, good one. huh? I did want to be one. Until did like you? high school chemistry. I no, did too. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm like, no. I, I saw a horse get a huge abscess on the side of his head, and then it squirted out in my dad's face <laughs> and the dog started licking it up off the ground and i was like no i don't want to be a vet <laughs> that was when i was young you know, I don't but... know the smells and the fluid didn't bother me until after i had kids oh until it I changes had babies and i was like mm. yeah 
and then and then they have to get up in the middle of every blizzard and go <laughs> i mean ranchers do too but <laughs> they only get the bad stuff right they only have to deal with the problems yeah the next question is do ranchers break their own horses meaning do they do they take their own horses raise them up and then train them from start to finish do you still do do you do your own breaking oh it's a complicated question <laughs> i like halter breaking and i like prepping them and like i don't mind doing first saddling and all that kind of stuff but i'm not riding young horses <laughs> I why not it. i mean it's I only like to send them to somebody there's only a lot of pain involved in in breaking colts to me i i'm not that good of a rider yeah. so i don't like the super young like like 30 yeah. 30 60 days yeah then i can take them and finish them yeah let's right? go do some stuff which is still really risky but yeah. When you get on a colt that's never been ridden, it's like they don't have a clue what they're going to do. So that you don't yeah. either. And I, my dad he always used to love that. And I'm not. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't. Like, I've started a couple colts, but I wouldn't say that it was. It's a thing that I enjoy. I really enjoy, like, raising young horses. And then I used to usually send them off to somebody to put a really good foundation on them. And then Taylor and I will just ride them and do ranch stuff and and go to work um but i really like the goal would be to learn how to really finish the horse put a really nice handle on them um so that's like a lifetime thing but that's that's also hard to do when you're kind of get work done that's the hard you know, part because you have to get work done so you're i know it's it's, like it's, you it's only a, have so much you only have time. so much time and then you know i also don't like to hurry my young horses right but it's like can you afford to feed them for four years or five years before they're you know, being a ranch hand is one of the steps to becoming a rancher, I think. And sometimes you just stay a ranch hand all your life. Being a ranch hand doesn't really involve all of the the risk that owning the property has. So how would you become a ranch hand? Somebody is wanting to get become a ranch hand. You know, I keep telling people becoming a ranch hand is not just like stepping out here and just learning it. It's, it takes a an enormous amount of skill that you learn, like how fast to move something, where to be, where not to be. Uh, how hard is it to get a job as a ranch hand with no experience? I mean, it's, it's hard to get a job uh, if you have no experience, because we all look for people that have experience. Uh, if you are looking to get into it, I would recommend looking into an internship and trying to gain a little bit of experience through an internship. And then people will automatically come to you for an appointment. Right. Good advice. I get asked this quite a bit, is should you go to college if you want to become a rancher? And that's a good, good question. Our culture says go to college no matter what you want to do. This is what we say. So you, you, where, how did you grow up? Did you grow up on a ranch or? Yeah, I grew up on a ranch uh, just outside of Livingston. Oh, outside of Livingston, okay. Yeah. I have moved a long ways in my travels. Yeah. <laughs> moved down the river. Not very far, huh? No, moved down the river a few, few miles. So yeah, this is what I grew up doing. And how did you, how did you become a, a ranch? What are you? A ranch manager? Yep, yep. I, ma I manage this place and you know I worked on several different outfits and then came here and when that manager left I took over. And did you go to college? I went to college for a year. I went to MSU Northern yeah. in Haber for, you for a year. Feel that benefited you in any way oh, for yeah. what you're doing? I mean I think it did. If I you know looking back when you're 19 years old school's not that important. But now looking back, I wish I would have finished. But I mean, I still could, but I don't like school. So no. I'm, I'm gonna hang out right now. Well, I, I went to college for two years after I was like, I thought the same thing as you. And then I went back for two years and I thought this is, I know most of what they're teaching me anyway, absolutely worthless to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. That's... The problem is you have to take so much stuff that doesn't matter to find the thing that you do and you can go online and find a course or you know like ranching for profit you know them yeah you know That's, you can do I, something like I, that i just did that did you i just got back on saturday and how was that that was great 
that was you know that was probably more the guy you got more information from that in six days than i did in college yeah but because they're focusing on what you're doing they're, they're I mean, right ranching for profit is uh they're, they focus on your business how to make your business profitable and stuff like that and it's just very you know and there's i mean it's all older folks that have been running businesses ranches forever farms and never could make a profit and so it's it was good i this is actually the second time i took it i took it back in 2019 and then again now just for a refresher yeah i've never done it but i heard it's really good you know and like you say ranching is a business and people you know some people don't act like it is but it is yeah and you it's a very unique business because yeah. there's a lot of things that don't that wouldn't apply to a normal business yeah. so it's good to have a place you can go to learn specifically how to make money doing this you know because yeah. to be honest with you most ranches don't know how to do a balance sheet they don't know how to do you know the profit and loss and all that and they don't understand the difference between you know your overheads and your gross margins and all that and that's what they teach at that class and it's it's you know, good information stuff you don't think think about on the daily out here right and it's hard to do none of us want to do the office work nobody <laughs> wants to do that and you know that's what they that's what they call it you know instead of being out here doing the ten dollar an hour job what what we're doing today being in the office and doing the hundred dollar an hour job for your business true true it's a a huge privilege to be able to live here in the state of montana it really is but ranching has with comes with a lot of things that are hard and you won't really under you never really understand that unless you lived that life the ranching lifestyle 24 hours a day for years or at least a year which is why a lot of people buy land in montana and then leave because after a couple years they understand it's not just like taking a vacation and looking out your window at the beautiful scenery it's completely different but that being said it is one of the best places in the world to live and i know a lot of montans are going to be mad at me when i say this so i wanted to ask these people why they do it i know, i understand that it that it's the best place to live but it's really hard to see when you're doing something hard sometimes something that's stressful when you're doing it constantly sometimes you can lose sight of that and i wanted to know if these guys think about how lucky they are to live where they do how they live there and really what keeps them in the lifestyle of ranching yeah you how long you guys lived out here we lived here for 12 years now on the ranch, on the ranch for 12 years yep why do you live here well i live here because this is where i grew up and this is what i know and i think this is what i'm best at I mean, I, yeah, ranching, it's, uh, it's in my blood, and I love it. I mean, there's certain times of the year where I dislike it, but <laughs> most of the time, of course, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you get to do something new every day. It's not driving to an office, same thing every day. This is, I mean, we do the same thing in a big cir circle, you know, cavity. It's a big, yes, thank you, mm -hmm. cycle, but it's something new every, every day, and you're constantly learning. That's for sure. I don't know what she'd have to say. Yeah, exactly. That, I think we decided pretty early on that it was um, about this is where we wanted to raise our kids. And, you know, to have an opportunity to be on a place like this, um, you, you have to work here. <laughs> and we've been here a long time 12 years feels like a long time sometimes mm -hmm. but you know our kids don't know any different they're pretty it's pretty normal for them to grow up in a place like this and get to ranch the way that we do and you know i know for like taylor um that grew up on a family place you know to be able to have the machinery that we have and have the opportunity that we have and not have to worry about that and get to just focus on his job and i mean that's been pretty neat um and then also going from like you know not being able to pay our bills at like our first ranch job and there not being a job for me on that place and me having to drive every single day to town just to make 
not that much money um, to working, you know, our way up and now being able to run an incredible business and being trusted with that is like, it's pretty great. And being able to work uh, side by side with each other. Yeah. You know, some days it's rough, <laughs> but other days it's pretty, it's pretty nice have, being able to have your spouse out here doing stuff with you on a day to day basis. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. And I think it's been good for Taylor, like moving into a management role. Um, it's, it's like, it's definitely running a business more than cowboy, more than handling livestock. And I think that took him a little while to grow into is, you know, the thing you, the administrative stuff that you do, the financial things that you do, the planning, that is your, that is management and dealing with people um, more so than, than ranch hands or cowboys. Um, I think he misses the old days, some days, a lot more simple. <laughs> well, the cow, the cowboy and his fun it just doesn't pay as much so it's, it's really fun to actually go do it sometimes as a rancher yeah. right but you know. yeah but, but you know like we, we we get to raise our kids um here and we get to you know it's a long drive and there's things about it that are difficult but on the other hand like we live in an incredible place and we wouldn't have an opportunity to do that otherwise if we weren't working here. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I know raising your kids is, is a... I, I think one thing that people maybe don't understand is like the connection to nature that you have, you know, out here. And you grow up with it. It's like playing in the barn or out there mm -hmm. in the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I really think, you know, you grow up in this, you respect nature you respect animals that's the that's the big big thing you learn how to handle animals and care care for them you know that's what we're stewards of the land it, you know that's that's the biggest thing that a lot of people don't understand is you know we don't want to destroy the landscape we're here to improve it the best we can and that's we use uh, animals to do it and you know, you have to take take care of your livestock. That's the that's one of the biggest things. And certain times of year, it's hard. It's hard on us. It's hard on machinery. It's hard on on livestock when it's negative twenty, negative thirty outside. But we have to go tend to our animals, and sometimes that's a top priority. You know, we don't want to be out there, but we have to to care care for the livestock. I think it's also different when you're management and they're they don't belong to you um it it's it's funny because people talk about ranching um we take care of them as though they're our own oh no we take care of these ranch cattle much better than our own <laughs> we take care of everything that belongs to ranch much better than we do our own um like we know we prior checked our cows today i think that's the third time we've seen them this year um so it just is you know, you take a lot of pride in that, and it's what we're here for. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, so this this ranch family here, I, I heard something on the new show, 1923, that I thought was really awesome. It, the In the narration, they said that in ranching, there are no weekends. <laughs> because you have to do the same thing on Sunday that you did on Thursday and Monday and Tuesday. And that is so true. And these people right here are people that are living that out it it's one of the sacrifices you make to do ranching is that you're you, you don't really get a lot of vacations and things but they get to live and work right here with each other with family even though a lot of people are never going to get to experience that it's a super hard life in a, a lot of ways and an amazing life in a lot of other ways so i appreciate you letting me in on part of that life today and uh Letting me come help you. Anytime. We, anytime. We love anytime. having you. I enjoy free labor. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do much, but you had a lot of labor today, man. It, it went smooth. So that was though. really nice. It went smooth. You were good. The weather yeah. was good. Everybody's it, happy. it doesn't actually work that way all the time, that it, everything just kind of goes right through the chute and there's no wind. Yeah, no That's the big thing. When oh, do we get wind. that? No wind. Yeah. No wind. I mean, these are days you cherish. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly.
Oh. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Come back. It was good us. to good to meet you. Yeah. We love it. And, come uh, back anytime. Absolutely. Let's come back and we'll go ride. Yeah. Runs around here, amazing. Absolutely, I'd love to. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any comments to that, leave them down below. Next week, I actually have a video of me vaccinating a hundred horses in a day. It's uh, something we do every year. You have to vaccinate and worm, and it's kind of a process because it's a little different than cows. You don't really want to run these nice, gentle horses through a chute. They're not near as tough as a cow as far as hide goes, so they can ding themselves up pretty good. So anyway, that's next week. Make sure you subscribe and go to my website, trinityvandenacre.com and check out how you can become involved in my community and in my upcoming events. Hopefully we're gonna to put together some cowboy camp stuff in Montana this year. If not this year, next year, hopefully this summer. So go check it out, trinityvandenacre.com.